1,000 miles in my 2024 US spec Ford Ranger Raptor. This is the Shelter Green. In case any of you are going to ask, yes, I paid a dealer markup. I paid 2,000 more than MSRP, but I've been waiting for this truck to come to the United States for three or four years now. Been watching all the guys in Australia, South Africa, over in Asia, everywhere in the world that's gotten them except for us and just been super jealous. So when a dealer uh, 90 miles north of me put a post on Facebook Marketplace of a picture of this truck and it didn't have someone who had ordered it, I was there the next morning and they hooked me up um, so I'm thrilled to have it. And I know a lot of you are deciding between the Ranger Raptor, the Colorado ZR2 or ZR2 Bison, or the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro that's coming out, or the TRD Sport or TRD Offroad. All of those are amazing trucks, but to me, the Ford Ranger Raptor was the right choice. We're going to talk about um, the things I love about it, the things I wish it had or hopefully will have in future uh, model years and then just things i've learned about this truck driving it a thousand miles on the freeway in traffic in the city um, out on the fire roads it did awesome on the fire road so we're just going to go ahead and get into it we'll start with the dislikes so i'm going to quickly go through the list there's no physical owner's manual um, every car i've had in the past you had a book with the index in the front then you could go to the page the owner's manual in the raptor is in the infotainment screen so you go to the main the main screen and you click on owner's manual and then it's a it's you navigate it by search which is difficult because if you search for engine oil filter nothing comes up um, it offers you different things like cabin air filter fuel filter but no oil filter um, next thing is the rusting drive shafts so in the united states the drive shafts are bare metal in australia south africa and asia they're all painted drive shafts on these ranger raptors so i'm not sure why they did that here um, in other markets in the world they do have the painted but here they're rusting uh, for me the surface rust on the drive shaft itself is not a big deal easy fix it's the cv joints that are already completely covered in rust so i took it in the ford dealership said that was normal and expected so i'm not cool with that i plan on fixing it myself i'm just going to clean it up and uh, put some fluid film or some sort of uh, paint protectant on there the next thing is that the fuel door does not lock on the US spec Ranger Raptor. So when you lock the truck, the tailgate locks, all the doors lock, obviously, but the fuel door is still open. So it is an anti-tamper um, fuel system. So you can't just like stick your finger in there, but there are just two little tabs that hold the second flap. And you can, with a, with a little bit of work, get that thing open in like five seconds. Or you can just buy the, the funnel that comes with the truck that bypasses that. So you could add fuel to your own car if you needed to. The funnel costs like $2 on Amazon, then you just stick it in there and you have access to the gas tank. So if you were a nefarious human, you could pour sugar in someone's gas tank, you could siphon the fuel out. Uh, just would have been a nice feature. The fact that they do offer it in other parts of the world and they don't offer it here was interesting to me. The next issue is that the fuses, uh, the fuse boxes don't have labels in them. So when you get to the fuses, the two fuse boxes under the hood or the one underneath the steering wheel or the, the, the steering column inside the driver cabin, you have all your fuses there. You don't have a fuse puller that I was able to find and nothing's labeled. It's not labeled on the inside of the little uh, door that you take off. It's not labeled the numbers of the fuses. You have to go into the manual in the infotainment system and actually look for the pictures and figure out what you're trying to change and then go back and forth. I like to have the paper right there with me so I can kind of uh, orient it to what I'm looking at and figure out which fuse I'm looking for. So something I'll probably get used to over time, but still a little bit of an issue with the, uh, the lack of the owner's manual and lack of labeling. The driver's seat upholstery on my truck is already getting loose and wavy and other people that have had the same issue said within six months or a year they started getting creases and some issues so i already took it into the dealer had them look at it take pictures send it up to ford and they're going to get back to me but it's in my vehicle's record not something i want to uh you know lose my truck for a week over for them to fix i just am i'm curious what they're going to do for me other people said they've replaced the seats um, my passenger seat and the back seat are all nice and tight so we'll see what they can do on that Next up is the undercarriage. So there's no skid plate or protection for the transmission. So the transmission fluid pan is plastic, which is not a big deal. Plastic nowadays is easier to mold. Uh, it's super strong, but there's no skid plate that protects it. It is probably six inches up higher than everything else. But if you were to high center on a rock or something, you could put a hole in it. Uh, there is a skid plate under the engine oil pan and front diff. And then in the rear, there's a plastic tub underneath the gas tank, but no real protection to the gas tank. So I will be looking into aftermarket skid plates for the transmission and the fuel tank. 
Um, next up, there's no physical buttons for the locking differential. So you have to go in through the infotainment screen and push them on. I know when you're locking the disc, normally you're at a stop, so it's not a big deal, but it would be nice just to have a button that you could push instead of having to navigate through the screens to get to it. Uh, in the back seats, there are no vents or heat ducts. So you just gotta aim your vents from the front back to the back. It's not a big cabin, uh, but vehicles nowadays seem to have that pretty standard and we don't have it here. I did hear from someone who received their vehicle in South Africa that they do have air vents in the back, not heat vents. So again, a feature that's available in other segments of the world that is not available in the United States. Um, there's no sunroof option in the 2024 Ranger. Um, I hope they put that in there as an option. It's one of those things that it's a nice to have, not a must. I uh, realize that my wife's van that we've had for 13 years has a sunroof. I think we might've opened it twice, but I know there are a lot of people that really do enjoy sunroofs. So it would have been a cool feature to have the auto start stop feature on this truck. It uses the starter every time. And I just, I'm, a fair, I'm afraid of the extra wear and tear. It says in the manual that they put an upgraded battery and starter in here for that very reason. But even then, I don't want it starting and stopping every time I stop in traffic or at a red light. So I disable it every time I get in. Not a huge deal, but it would be nice to be able to permanently disable it. But I think they get in trouble with the EPA if they do that because it's set to a certain carbon emission and it's based on that auto start stop. There is no split seat in the back. So this is really important for people to have car seats. So if you have a car seat strapped in the back and you want to be able to access half of what's underneath your seat or behind your seat, you can't do that in this vehicle. Normally you get the 40-60 split in the back. Uh, in this one, it's all or nothing. So just something to be aware of. I don't know, I'm guessing the Colorado and the Tacoma don't have a solid bench in the back. It's probably split 60-40. On to the next thing. There are no cooled or vented seats in the front. That's a feature I had in my 2020 Explorer that I really liked. But to mitigate that, you have the remote start, so you can just start your vehicle from your key fob or from your phone to you know, get the AC going three or four minutes before you get out there. So you can cool down the interior that way. Just a little thing that previous model years and different vehicles have that the Ranger does not. There's a button on the steering wheel that says LIM. It's for speed limit. So as you pass speed limit signs, the forward-looking camera picks up the current speed limit and uh, displays it for you. And if you push the limit button, it will limit your top speed to that speed which it's a cool feature with only really one use case I can think of. Like if you're driving in Oklahoma from Enid down to Oklahoma City, the speed limit is 70 the whole way. And then when you get to a small town in, a, in a, about a quarter mile, it goes from 70 down to 60 to 50 to 40 to 30. You go through the town and the cop is gonna be sitting right there to give you a ticket. And then on the other side of the town, it goes right back up. So if you had the limit feature and you were foot on the gas, when you pass those signs, it'll slow you down. And on the other side, it'll speed you up. But the downside to that is if you had a big semi truck coming up behind you and you're going 70 and all of a sudden, and he's going 70 and all of a sudden you pass a 50, you can have your foot all the way to the floor. It's gonna slow you down to 50. It doesn't apply the brakes, but it will slow you down. So you have to press the limit button again to disable that and then you can start going. I just, I wish they had a little more uh, thought going into that. I just won't use it. So to me, not a big thing. It's easy to just not push the button, but it has potential to be pretty great. The other thing it does is every time you pass a new speed limit, it will change it to that speed limit. So if you were in a 60 and you had it set to 67 because you felt safe going seven over, and then you pass a 50, it's gonna slow it down to 50. Um, it doesn't remember how much over or under you were for the last one. Just little things like that. Um, next thing up, there's no handle on the driver's side when you get into the vehicle. You can just grab your steering wheel. That's not a big deal, but it's nice to have that little grab handle up there. The passenger side does have it. One thing I noticed in my car when I first got it was when I was taking my foot from the gas pedal to the brake, my toe was getting caught up on the heater vents. So I have a size 12 foot, not crazy big, bigger than average, I guess. But um, it was one of those things that was very annoying for the first week. And then I was a little more deliberate uh, going from the gas to the brake without bringing my foot, you know, the extra inch back. And I haven't had it happen in the second week of ownership. So I think I'm already past it, but it was a little disconcerting to have that happen. Uh, it didn't happen in my BMW at all. I don't think it was a safety thing. I was always able to get to the brake, but it was just a little hindrance getting there. So those are really the only things I don't like about the car. I know the list is long, but every one of those things is really minor. And all of those things I've had issues with, and it doesn't deter me at all from this vehicle. 99.5% is awesome. And that 0.5% is just little things that I wish they'd done different. And they have an opportunity to change in future model years. Now on to the things I like and love about this truck. So the obvious one is the appearance. The color options they have are great. I love the shelter green. They've also got the blue, the hot pepper red. They've got three versions of gray. They've got a silver, a white, and a black. They all look awesome. Uh, the fender flares just make this thing look mean and wide and ready to go. The front end where it says forward across the, the grill is just a cool little added touch. Um, the ride height is perfect and the Raptor badging looks incredible. 
Moving on to the drivetrain, I mean, you've got that twin turbocharged engine. They use Garrett turbochargers. Uh, you got 405 horsepower, 430 foot-pounds of torque. It's attached to a 10-speed transmission, so you're always going to be in the power band. Um, your transfer case has four different modes, so you've got the two high, the four auto, the four high, and the uh, four low, and the locking front and rear differentials. I think another great thing about all of the EcoBoost is that there's no exhaust manifold, so all the exhaust comes together, or the manifold is incorporated into the head, and you just have one port coming off the head, and the turbo attaches directly to that. It saves a little space. You can't put headers on it, but it's engineered, so it, it works really well, uh, and they're able to fit a little more in there, keep it more compact. Um, another really good thing is that the catalytic converters are all the way up against the turbo, so I know on some of the other cars, the cats are down low, and people are coming in with the sawzall and cutting it out, so they make 20, 30 bucks, and you're out several hundred getting it replaced. These catalytic converters are way up in the engine bay. They're covered by different braces and things in the undercarriage, so it's really difficult to get to them. I did a video on it. You're welcome to go back and check it out, uh, see see what I did there. Um, moving on, the wheels and tires look really great. I love these BF Goodwrench KO3s. They came out with that for this truck specifically. So they're just, it, even the little things, like in between every other little knobby on the sidewall, it has a little KO3 in there. And then your spare tire is a full size BF Goodwrench KO3 as well. Not on a matching wheel, it's on a steel wheel. I intend to go to a tire shop when I get my tires rotated and have that rotated onto one of the actual rims so I can keep it in the rotation so it doesn't just sit under the truck for five, 10 years and just rot. Um, the suspension on this thing, I mean, that's why we buy these Raptors. It's got the two and a half inch live valve shocks. It's got really beefy upper and lower control arms on the front. In the back, it's got the Watts link and it's got uh, coils and springs instead of leaf springs. I mean, this thing is ready to go. Set up for Baja, really not a rock crawler like the Jeeps out there with the solid axle. Um, you're not gonna get nearly as much flex uh, as you can get in a big old lifted Jeep. But for what it is, I love it. I would not trade it for a Jeep at all. Um, the interior of this thing, when you're driving down the road, it's it's quiet. It is really nice inside. Um, you can listen to an audiobook and you don't have to turn it all the way up. You can listen to your music without blasting it. I mean, you can blast it. The stereo is also incredible in this car. We'll go into that in a little bit. Um, actually, we'll go into that now. So the stereo, it's a BNO 10 speaker. So you've got three speakers up on the dash. You've got uh, two speakers down in the, dr the front doors, and those are six by nine mids. And then your tweeters, like I said, are up on the dash. And then in the rear, you have six and a half coaxial. So it's a mid and a tweeter. And then behind the rear seat, you have a six inch ported sub. So that all adds up. You've got 10 total speakers, plenty of power. Um, I may consider upgrading the speakers, if nothing else, the center speaker over the dash, over the tablet. But really, I'm, I'm really happy with the quality of this. I would say it's better than what I had in my old Toyotas uh, with their upgraded stereos. Not quite as good as the Harman Kardon that I've had in BMWs, but it is very close. The only thing it's missing is that deep bass, but you're not going to get that from a six inch sub, uh, even with a ported enclosure. So if JL Audio comes out with a stealth box that fits behind the rear seat, I will absolutely be uh, looking into upgrading to that. Other than that, I am thrilled with it. So the rear window is power sliding, which to me, that's a really cool feature. You don't have to reach back there and try to open it up. I've never had that before. I've always had one that you could slide, but now you've just got a little button up in your uh, overhead, up by your map lights, where you can just open and close that. So that's also really neat. Uh, get some more airflow in there. One of the things I really like about this truck is it's one of the only mid-sized trucks out there that has more than 48 inches between the wheel wells in the bed of the truck. So you can fit a sheet of plywood, a sheet of drywall, a full sheet back there between the wheel wells, and it doesn't have to be up on one of them. You don't have to build a brace with two by sixes. Um, it's just, it slides right in there. And I have a video on that as well if you wanted to look at it, but the only other mid-sized truck out there that has that is the Honda Ridgeline. Um, I mean, those are great if you're just gonna you know, drive around town in it. I personally wouldn't want a Honda Ridgeline. I love Honda cars. I wouldn't go that way for a truck, but that's just a personal choice. I'm sure the people that have them love them. They do a lot of great things in them, just not for me. Uh, the Colorado is not there. It's two and a half inches too small. So it's uh, 45 and a half inches. And then the Toyota Tacomas, the TRD Pro, TRD Offroad, they all have the same bed and their beds are plastic. Um, and those are only 41 and a half inches across. So you'd have to build some sort of brace in there. And I think the Toyota actually has like spots to put two by sixes where they slide right in there if you cut them to length. So they thought about how to make it work, but it's not something you can slide right in there. So to me, that was a great feature that I have already used. I didn't even need plywood. I would just went and bought a piece because it was, it was awesome. Next thing is the active headlights. So they're not just you know bright, great LED headlights, but they're actually, when you turn, 
they turn a little bit. So you're not always writing, lighting up what's right in front of you, you're lighting up where you are going. And then it also, when you're going up and down over little bumps and rises, they, they raise and lower a little bit. That I haven't been able to uh, observe. I have absolutely been able to observe when they're turning left and right, when I'm turning left and right. But if you're just sitting in your driveway and you're turning the steering wheel because you want to see it, it won't happen. You have to actually have some sort of uh, forward speed to make them go back and forth. The next thing I like about this truck is it has the six auxiliary switches that are already wired. They've already got fuses and relays set up. You've got one up in the very front, up by the front bumper. You've got three more up in the uh, engine bay by the firewall. You've got one that goes back to the bed, and I can't remember where the other ones are, but they're strategically placed throughout the car, so you don't have to run wires all the way from one spot for all six. So I plan on using one of the front ones to put the little three amber lights that the other Raptors have. This one doesn't have it just because it's a little bit smaller, but they've already got aftermarkets um, for them. I've already ordered it, should be here in two weeks. So that's what I'm gonna use one of the switches for. I will probably also get a, um, a radio for inside the truck so I don't have to have a handheld when I'm on the trails. I'll put that on an auxiliary switch and then I will probably also do a, um, a compressor. Next up is this, the heated seats and steering wheel. So I love the heated steering wheel. If you've never had it and then you get it, you realize how great it is. Um, and then the heated seat, it doesn't just heat the lower part of the seat where your legs are and just your lumbar. It goes all the way up to your shoulders. So below the headrest, everything there is heated. I've never sat in a heated seat that went all the way up to my shoulder blades before. And again, that's one of those things where when you've never had it, you don't realize how great it is. And then once you have it, it's hard to go back uh, to a car that only heats up your lower back. We already talked about the power of the engine and the suspension and the wheels and the tires, but just the performance of this truck, when you put all that together, it's amazing. I, I came from a BMW M3 and this truck doesn't replace that obviously on the streets, but it's completely different. And I do not at all regret trading that thing in for this because while I can't go on a track and go quite as fast, well not quite as fast, I can't go nearly as fast with late braking into a turn or just cornering or acceleration, but for what this truck is, you can take it off road, you can go 50 miles an hour on a dirt road and feel completely in control. It's just great. The performance of this truck is off the charts. The four exhaust modes are pretty cool. I like the fact that when you're on the highway, you can put it in quiet mode, have a conversation with your passenger, listen to your music or an audiobook, and just not hear all the noise of the road. The, the windproofing on this vehicle is impressive. You don't get all that wind noise. You hear some tire noise, but it's nothing like the old mud tires you might've had on a previous truck or something. There's no crazy drone in the exhaust. It's just like driving a, a big, tall sedan down the road. That's the best thing I can compare it to. Um, you've, but you go into normal mode and it's just like a standard truck. You go into sport mode, it's a little bit deeper tone. And then you go into Baja mode and it's, it's as loud as it's gonna get. It's still not obnoxious by any means. There will be people out there that will put some other Spintech or Borla or Remus exhaust on thing, this thing, and it'll scream, probably sound amazing, uh, open up the turbos a little bit more. And, and on that note, these are really high flow catalytic converters. So we're, we're changing topics here, but the catalytic converters are really good. I know a lot of people think, get a turbo car, you need to get catalyst down pipes, you gotta increase the flow of the exhaust. I think this is pretty good based on what I've read and what I've seen just looking at these catalytic converters. Um, there's always room to improve, but I really think that's low on the list of things that you have to do to get more performance out of this. Build quality inside and out is incredible. The door panels are nice and tight. The door shut with a thud, no rattles. It has insulation in the doors. The door panels are snapped in there tight. It's just, it's really well put together. And then you get under it and everything is so substantial. There's no chintzy sheet metal. There's no tiny little bolts holding things together. It's just chunks of metal. And it, just, it does not look like anything could happen to it. It is, the rear axle is huge. The front upper and lower control arms are big beefy aluminum pieces and it's every bolt needs like at least a half inch. Actually, I was surprised. A lot of the bolts are metric, which it is what it is, but either way, they're like 15 millimeter bolts or 16 millimeter bolts, or if it were gonna be standard, it, they're you know half inch, five eighths, uh, big, big beefy equipment down there. So I'm very happy with that. I've had other trucks where you get under it and it just, it's surprising how, um, how they, I don't wanna say they cut corners, but they just, they use the smallest thing they can to get by. It seems like Ford just said, you know what, if, uh, three quarters is going to work. Let's go with a one inch. Just make it bigger and stronger. I really like the way the steering feels in this truck, both on the pavement and out in the dirt. You've got actual mechanical linkage uh, connecting your steering. There's no drive-by wire, you know, motors moving stuff. You have actual pieces of metal that are turning in there, which I still appreciate. I really appreciate because some cars are going to the drive-by wire. And I know they do that in airplanes and I know it works, but it's still kind of creepy to me if you were going down a hill and everything dies, you know, an EMP goes off and all of a sudden you can't even steer. Like, yeah, you're not gonna have any power, but at least you can steer yourself down the hill. So 
that is way off on a tangent. Anyway, the steering is really good, solid feel, good feedback, not too stiff, not too loose. Um, it's just you know right where it should be. They put a lot of thought into it and they didn't cut corners on it. When you get to the fuel in this, premium fuel is not required. 87 is what it says on the fuel door. I put 93 in it only because when I had my Focus ST, it took 87, but they told me in the EcoBoost motor, if you put higher octane and the, the car will advance timing, or in this case, the truck will advance timing to its limit so that you get a little more power out of it with a higher octane, it's not gonna detonate early. Now, if you were running 93 and you've you know, upped that tune a little bit, when you go to 87, it will realize it's, it's pre-detonating and it'll retard the timing back. You won't hurt, hurt anything, it'll, it'll work just fine. So you have the option of the different fuels. And the way I understand it is you will get a little bit more performance out of the 93 than you do out of the 87. They put a lot of attention to detail into the little things in this car. For example, you open the door, if you look at your instrument panel, there's the front grille of a Ranger Raptor with a Ford across it. And then it goes into a truck kind of moving around uh, just on, a, on an axis, pivoting around. And then it goes into, when you actually push the start button and start the truck, it's a top down view of a truck and the Ford logo drops in there and some dust comes up. And then it goes into the gauges, go into red line, back down, and then your car's on ready to go. Instead, I mean, to me, that's a pretty cool little thing. I don't get tired of it. Every time I start it up, it puts a smile on my face. So I like that. And then the next thing, all the different modes that you have. So if you're in trailer mode or Baja mode or sport mode or normal mode, everyone has a different little truck that they show on there. Normal mode is just a blue Raptor. Uh, if you go into sport mode, you get a black Raptor with an R in the bed and just everything has a different little thing there. So it's not just one generic picture. They, they do little things here and there to just you know let you know, hey, we were thinking about this when we when we put this feature in. So the Sync 4 system with the Apple CarPlay, to me, is awesome. I love the fact that I can just have my phone on the charger. I still have Google Maps or uh, Waze or whatever you're going to use to navigate. You can also get into your Pandora. You can get into Audible. There's many apps that you can have on your phone that you can just go through the screen in your little tablet there, not little, your 12-inch or 13-inch tablet there, and um, be able to use that like it's an extension of your phone. You can get a text message, you just click on it and it'll read it to you, you can respond, it does voice to text, it reads it back to you and says, do you wanna send it? Just maybe all of you had Apple CarPlay in your previous cars, I did not. And it is just, you know, leaps and bounds ahead of what I had before. And I don't know how I lived without it. So the Apple CarPlay is awesome. The adaptive cruise control along with the lane assist is one of the coolest features, tech pieces of tech in this car. It's going to, you know, when you're driving down the road, going 65 in traffic on the freeway and you press the adaptive cruise control button, take your foot off the gas and it's going to slow down for you. It's going to speed up for you. It'll come to a complete stop on the freeway. And when traffic goes, it'll start going again. The lane assist will keep you in your lane. It goes back and forth. It kind of plays uh, ping pong or what I guess pong is the game where it goes back and forth, but it'll, it'll go back and forth between lane lines a little bit. It likes to hug the one on the right. I'm not super comfortable with that, but it won't cross over. So it is just, I live in DC, I drive in traffic a lot, and it's just one less thing to have to worry about. You just sit there and relax. You're obviously, you're obviously always ready to take over if something's going on, but it does a really good job. If someone cuts you off, it backs off a little bit. To me, it's a little aggressive on the brakes. Um, you always gotta be thinking about the guy behind you. If they're not looking, you don't want them to rear end you. But overall, it's an amazing system. Uh, there's also a limit button on the steering wheel. I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm gonna do a different video on that altogether. But to me, I'm not giving that a knock because it's one of those things where you just don't push the button and it's not an issue. So adaptive cruise control, amazing. Lane assist, awesome. I love it. It would have been super cool if they put the co-pilot in this, but right now, as I understand it, that's only in the Lightning and the Mach-E, uh, basically the self-driving version, and you gotta pay a subscription for that. The R button on the steering wheel, the little Raptor button is, is super convenient because if you set your car to uh, if you set your Raptor mode to sport mode with Baja exhaust, with your shock set to normal, what, all of your custom configurations, and the biggest one being the auto start stop off, when you get in your car and start it up and you press the, the little R button on your steering wheel twice, it'll go into that setting and disable the auto start stop. That doesn't seem like a big deal, but that auto start stop is not, I'm not a big fan of it. I understand there's a need for it with the EPA. I don't like it. Like I said before, it puts extra stress on the uh, starter and the battery. So. You press that R button twice and that gets rid of it. In my previous car, I actually bought the device that you plug into the OBD2 to disable it. I mean, it was like a hundred bucks, um, but to me it was worth it. This car, I don't have to spend that money. It's just every time I get in, I push the R button. I'm gonna go into sport mode anyway, so it does everything for me. Your gauges on the dash are modifiable, um, two of them. So you're always going to have your coolant temperature, your engine temperature. You're always going to have your fuel level. 
but the two in the middle, you can change them to show oil temperature, engine oil temperature, transmission temperature, um, turbo boost or vacuum. Um, just you have you have multiple different uh, gauges you can choose from to put in there, or if you want, you can just have a list uh, always displayed as well, and you can see I think there's nine or ten options that are in there. So with a scan gauge, you could have that anyway, plugged into your OBD2 and have it up there. But this thing gives you the option to do it internally in the system without adding things. So I really like that. Um, I generally keep it to the oil temperature and the oil pressure, but sometimes I'll put the turbo, uh, the boost on there as well, just to see, you know, if I'm getting on it, how much boost it's actually producing. And I've been interested in, to see how often it's in vacuum. The step bars or running boards on the sides of the truck look really nice. They're line or rhino lined or whatever you want to call it. It's basically a bed liner um, on it. They're made of solid aluminum, so not steel. They're not going to rust. And they're just, they're beefy. You can jump on them. The braces under there are super thick metal. Um, and they have the little Raptor logo in the back. They just look good. They stick out a significant amount. So if you wear like nice pants, if you're gonna drive this thing to work, you were just out in the mud and it's all muddy and you're wearing a suit or something, when you step out, if you don't step down on that and you put your leg over it, the back of your cap is gonna hit the thing and you're gonna get muddy. But that's with anything. Um, they are definitely not rock sliders. If you look under them, there's a lot of things that could get caught up. So they're, they're just steps, but they're inside the outside edge of the tire. So they're not gonna get hung up on anything. When you look at them from the side, they look like they stick out. But when you get up there, you see they're inside the tires. So I, I just think they're great. Um, I would have bought them after and put them on if they didn't come with it. The lighting inside and outside of this truck is well thought out. You've got lights um, on the exterior underneath both of the side view mirrors. So it lights up the passenger and driver side when you come up to it. You've got a light over the bed. You've got a light up by the handle on the tailgate. And then when you get inside, you've got ambient lighting everywhere. You've got your map lights and your dome lights to really lighten everything up. But you've also got lights in the door panels, um, a light over in the uh, glove compartment area and down in the little cubby. So nice little accent light. You can dim it through the infotainment system. It's just nice little touches like that. So you're not in pitch black inside the truck, but it's also not messing with your night vision. These Rangers all come with remote start. You can remote start with your fob by pressing the lock button and then the remote start button twice or you can get on your app on your phone and just start your car with that, lock the doors, unlock the doors. So I like that. The fact that there's no ventilated seats like we talked about, you can start it up. If anything, you can get the engine up to temperature, but you're also getting the AC going. So remote start is just a cool feature to have. These trucks come with a Wi-Fi modem through AT&T. So you, you pay a subscription, it's $20 to AT&T, and you have a Wi-Fi network in your own truck. You can set the Wi-Fi network name to whatever you want and change your password. So I have mine set up so when my kids leave the house and get in the car, their iPads just automatically switch over to this. It's great. Um, my kids won't go anywhere. Well, they will, but they don't like going anywhere without their YouTube or their Roblox or whatever they're playing at the time. I mentioned it quickly earlier, but the fact that the tailgate locks when you lock the truck is just a cool little feature. I think that's standard on a lot of trucks nowadays, but I just, I noticed it and thought when I get a tonneau cover, I will be able to lock it and then I can leave some stuff back there. Um, it's just going to keep honest people honest. A thief is still going to get in there if they really want your stuff, but it's just going to keep that guy from passing by and open it up and taking your stuff out of there. When I was shooting the exterior and interior lighting video I did a couple days ago, I realized it has the parking button down in the center console. I haven't used it yet, but I know uh, how the feature works and what it does. It's pretty neat. So one of these days I'm going to take it out to a parking lot, get a video of it actually, you know, pulling into a parking spot, parallel parking, all that stuff. But I just like the fact that this has it. And that just tells you that it has really good sensors all the way around the truck because there's other features those sensors use like automatic braking if you're going to back up and someone's coming out in a parking lot or if you're if someone pulls in front of you it's going to it's going to give you some brakes if you're not fast enough um, just little things like that to know it has 360 sensors all the way around that they trust for parking tells you that they're they're doing good things with this and it's getting better and better a very basic feature that a lot of cars have now is the auto sensing windshield wipers 90 percent of the time when i'm driving i have them off all the way but when it starts to rain, I'll put them into auto and then let it do its thing. In this truck, I had it in auto. It was a bright sunny day. They were obviously put away. I saw a puddle. I was out on the dirt road. I hit the puddle and water came up, was all over the windshield. And before I could even put my hand down there, the windshield wipers were already getting that water off of there. So I never really realized how useful they were until that moment. And I thought, you know, it would have given me another half second of not being able to see out my window, uh, but it just took care of it for me. So the auto sensing wipers always keep them on even if it's a sunny day, because if you go through a puddle or if a bird takes a big old dump on your, your, your windshield, it'll clean it off or it'll smear it around. Then you'll have to uh, pull it to get some of the windshield wiper fluid up there to clean that off. But if it's just water, it'll clean that. When you buy this truck, you get to go to the Ranger Raptor Assault School. So when I bought my Focus ST and my Focus RS and my Explorer ST, they took me out there, let me drive around on a track, drive around on the roads in one of their vehicles. You don't take your own, you drive there so you can just drive it like you stole it. 
uh, which is so much fun because we all take care of our own vehicles, but when it's someone else's, it's fun to really see what it can do. So you get to go out there. You cannot. You can take a guest. It costs fifty dollars just for the guest to come and eat dinner. If that guest is going to be in the vehicle with you driving, it's an additional fifteen hundred dollars. So I will be going by myself. But just to know that it's about a fifteen hundred dollar experience that they're covering for you is cool. You've got to get yourself there and you got to pay for your hotel. But other than that, you get to go drive one of their trucks around. Uh, they have a jump out there. They've got a dirt track and then they go out on the trail. It's a full day of driving. So I am really looking forward to it. The website is up. It's RangerRaptorAssault.com. They say the dates are gonna be from June through November, but right now they're only showing, I think, eight dates between the middle of June and the end of July. So I'm signed up to go on July 10th. If any of you guys are getting a Raptor, it'd be super cool to meet you out there and uh, you know race around that dirt track and see who can go faster. Engine, I mentioned it. I just wanna point it out again, this thing uses actual Garrett turbos. They're name brand, they're well-known, they're maintainable. I mean, I was excited when I saw that. I don't know if my Focus RS had Garrett turbos or not. It was so crazy in there, I couldn't even see them. This one, you can look right down there on the passenger side and see it, Garrett A138B, I think is what it was. But it's just cool to see a name brand turbo on here, not a Ford Motor Company or some third party, you know, add on, no name, no branding. The final thing I'll mention, and it's a little thing, the vents and the cowls on the front quarter panels and the hood are functional. So they're not just there for looks, they're actually venting air from somewhere under the hood. Now I know like on the Toyota Tacoma TRD Sport. It has a sweet looking hood with a hood scoop, but that thing is just a piece of solid plastic. So no air is going in there. It is strictly for looks. Uh, I know a lot of other vehicles like the vents on the side of a Mustang, for example, those are also just for looks. Maybe in the higher end ones, they actually go in and vent the brakes, but generally they're just there for looks. Um, so in this one, they're actually functional. And that's it. I appreciate you guys sticking around seeing this. My wife uh, was in Rome when I bought this truck. She wasn't thrilled when she got home. She said, I'm not allowed to buy any other things for it. So I'm actually trying to get to a thousand subscribers so I can start monetizing this and get a couple dollars a month so I can save up to get a tonneau cover, a spray and bed liner, an overland thing. I mean, it's gonna take a long time to get that. But if you subscribe, you'd be helping me out. I appreciate it. I love making these videos. I have a real job, so this is not something that I need to do. I just really enjoy it. Um, and I love reading all the comments you guys put on there. I try to get back to everybody. So if this was helpful, I mean, leave a like, subscribe. Now that I've got this video out, I want to start going in and doing one or two minute videos about each of the things we talked about or that I talked about here. So I've done a lot of the stuff in my previous videos, but I was so excited about all those. I would put eight or 10 things into one 15 minute video and just hope you guys watched it and stayed through all of it or got something out of it. What I want to do is a two minute video about the auxiliary switches, how they're wired, where the fuses are, where where the, the wire comes out. And then I'll go into the different exhaust modes. I'll do a two minute video on that. And then I can go into the steering for two minutes and actually show you the mechanical linkage. And uh, I don't really know how to show you how much tension there is on it, but go into the Apple CarPlay for one or the R button, how you set it, how you use it. And it'll be uh, labeled on there. So over the next couple weeks, I plan on doing one or two of those a day and just having them up there. Um, I'm hoping that'll help. If you think that's a terrible idea, leave a comment and I will switch it up and do something different. But Anyway, I apologize for this being a super long video, but it's all super exciting stuff to me. And I really hope that it's useful because I know when I'm going to buy a car, I want to see everybody. I don't want to just, well, I love watching Top Gear. I love watching, you know, all the different really good channels that do a good review. But I also enjoy knowing the people like you and I that bought this thing, what we think about it. What are the little things that we're seeing issues with that the, the big companies aren't going to talk about? So that's it. I hope you have a great day. It's over!